In The Hunger Games, the capital has created monstrous mutts, or terrifying genetically modified organisms that hunt Katniss and the other tributes. We've created genetically modified organisms too, but for the most part, they're actually really helpful. Who's gonna explain this? I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute! Thankfully, we haven't created lizards that can bite your head off or monkeys that can stab your internal organs with their teeth. But one of the most famous genetically modified organisms in the Hunger Games is something that we already have. The Jabberjay, meet the Lyrebird. This tiny Australian native has the amazing ability to mimic other bird sounds and also man-made sounds, just as the Jabberjay does. Here it is mimicking a camera shutter. Here it is mimicking a car alarm. And here it is sounding just like a chainsaw. In the Hunger Games, the Jabberjays are genetically modified birds with the ability to yak back whole human conversations and were used as spies. I imagine that the lyre bird is about as close as you can get to these shrieking little animals. I bet you can even get it to mimic Katniss's Mockingjay song. But genetically modifying organisms isn't just dystopian fiction. We've made kittens glow in the dark. No, really. But we don't mess around with genomes just for fun, at least not all of the time. If you're one of the millions around the world who have diabetes, for example, you have GMOs to thank for your insulin. In the 1920s, we discovered insulin and decided to start extracting it for human use from animals. We took dog and pig pancreas glands and ground them up to get at this insulin, but there were side effects when we injected it into people because there were still animal proteins on the insulin itself. Half a century later, we figured out how to make single-celled organisms do the work for us and make our insulin. To do this, we took the two chains that make up insulin itself and translated them into DNA sequences. We then inserted these strands into plasmids, which are basically gene carriers, and inserted these into our bacteria. Now, once we select the bacteria that were producing exactly what we wanted, we had single cell genetically modified organisms that were making insulin for diabetics. Other GM efforts aim to be just as useful. We discovered how to insert genes into salmon that allowed them to grow to market size in as little as 16 months instead of three years. And right now we are ramping up efforts to insert lethal genes into mosquito populations so that when they breed, they might eradicate a disease, dengue fever, that affects hundreds of millions of people every year. And yes, even making kittens glow in the dark is useful. A few years ago, researchers wanted to see if they could insert new genes using viruses into cat embryos, so they inserted genes from jellyfish that would let them know if it worked. And it did! Cats are a better model for HIV, and so being able to easily modify cats will help us study the disease. Though no one can really say if human-lizard hybrids are in our near future or not, we are well on our way to understanding genetics enough that we might help solve our food problems or cure deadly diseases with it. And as for jabber jays, we already have those. Why? Because science. <laughs> Want more science? Check out my last video on how to build a halo ring world. Click to subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks!